I'm going to prison for my paperweight. Remember that time when the ATF decided that a simple paperweight was a machine gun? Well, Pepperidge Farms remembers, and we're going to be sharing that with you as just another page out of the book War Stories with Mike. Because that's right, we've got Mike Kwiatkowski, owner of FFLExpert.com. If you've got questions because you're a dealer, manufacturer, or maybe you just bought something you don't know what the heck it is, be sure to check them out. Linked in the description box below. Guys, I've heard this story, and I asked him to come share it, which means you know it's going to be good. So let's get into it. Mike, I'm just going to turn you loose. What's going on? <laughs> okay, well, let me take you back to the late 1990s. I'm in college. I have more hair on top and less on the bottom. Life is easier, except that it's getting near finals time, and, you know, I've got a lot of papers to write. Are there any Jenko jeans involved in this story? Those were in the earlier 90s, and we're not going to talk about those today. <laughs> God, I would. <laughs> if you have any pictures of Mike and Jenko jeans, let me know, all right? Better let, let me know first. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> well, it's beautiful outside. I'm in my college apartment. I'm cranking out papers. Open the windows. Breeze blows through. Looks like I'm living in a birdcage. Papers are everywhere. And this annoys me. So I need to get a paperweight. But you know me, Tom. I'm kind of weird. So instead of just going and finding some rack outside, no, I go onto this brand new site called Auction Arms. I didn't even think Gunbroker existed yet. And I find a paperweight. Now today, something like this, it, we have 80% everywhere. At that time, not so much. This is a relatively rare item for that time period. And for $20, give or take, I have a paperweight. Time passes. I graduate with honors. Move out west. And within, oh, I want to say two, three weeks of moving, I get a letter in the mail from ATF. And we'll put a scan of this up so that you can see it. The letter itself is undated, but it was mailed on April 12th of 2004. Via certified mail from looks of it. Yep, certified mail. Whole nine yards there. Return receipt requested. The purpose of this correspondence is to inform you that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives wishes to speak with you regarding your apparent purchase of an item auctioned on auction arms. It has come to our attention that you are the winning bidder on auction number blah. Describes as follows. Rear chunk of M16 receiver. Ideal paperweight. Rear chunk of M16 receiver in process at Sendacorp. When the ATF stopped production, only piece I have ever seen like this. And you know it was important because there were four exclamation points in that description. That helped us back in the 90s. Oh, indeed. The ATF is conducting an investigation into the above-mentioned item and its previous owners. We, we would ask that you please contact Special Agent so-and-so at such-and-such upon receipt of this letter. We appreciate your cooperation in this matter. Great. I'm going to prison for my paperweight. <laughs> so my, that letter arrived at my mom and dad's home where I was living just before I moved. And my dad called me up, and knowing me, Michael, what did you do? What did I do? A well, paperweight I bought a few years earlier. Uh, now the Chicago ATF is very interested in this. Okay. And that was the start of what turned into, I'm going to, today I'm going to call it a low-level annoyance, but at the time it was a pretty big nightmare. I'm a young, skinny kid, just moved out to Arizona. I am still between jobs at this point. And the ATF is really bothered by my paperweight. What do I do? Well, after talking with a few people and every lawyer out there wanting a retainer that I couldn't afford, 
I called ATF. Lawyers, right? Oh, dear <laughs> Aren't God. Aren't they the worst? Horrific, <laughs> disgusting people. Just a plague upon us all. <laughs> I call them. And the first thing they want me to do is I need to come to Chicago and they need to get a look at this thing. Okay, I'm in Phoenix. What do you mean you're in Phoenix? Well, I'm in the state of Arizona and there's capital named Phoenix. No, 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 you're in Milwaukee. No, I'm not. I moved. How did you get the letter? It was forwarded to me. And there was a pause. Okay, well, we still need you to get up here with it. That's great. I'm broke. Got plane tickets? What do you mean you're broke? Well, when you don't have any money, no, no, no. And I explained to him that, look, I am I just moved down here. It was not the world's greatest plan at the time, which is I'm going to move and it'll be great. It did not include lining up a job first. I don't advise this to anybody. But I literally can't afford the plane ticket. I am doing side work and getting 50 to 100 bucks when I'm doing the side work. I'm keeping gas in my pickup. Well, all right, we'll, we'll look at transferring this down to Phoenix ATF. Well, that I can handle. Phoenix ATF gets hold of me. So you bought the rear half of an M16? Yes. And what are you doing with this rear half of the M16? It's my paperweight. <laughs> That's pretty close to the guy's reaction. <laughs> Why is Chicago bothering me with this? And it's a family channel, but he actually dropped a word that I can't repeat. And I said, I don't know, sir. Okay. Could we have a look at this thing? Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll send someone out, which is a whole lot easier than me flying into Chicago with this thing. It's... Not too long past 9-11, but flying with something like that's just not going to happen, at least easily. So a gentleman comes out, and he picks it up, and he looks at it, and he said, Son, why am I being bothered with this? And I said, I don't know, sir. I told that to the man on the phone. But apparently this is a big issue that I've got the rear third of an M-16, he said, this was never an M16. I know. This isn't readily convertible. I know. This doesn't even have the rings. Oh, I know. We'll get back to you. Okay. Then I learned through the grapevine that the gentleman who sold me this a few years ago was selling guns on auction arms, perfectly legal, but he wasn't requiring an FFL. He was just throwing them into boxes and sending them through the post office interstate to whoever the buyers were. And apparently that was an extra 20 or 50 bucks or something. I don't know. But they saw that description and Chicago got very interested. Chicago then wanted to confiscate it as evidence. Phoenix wouldn't do it. And this is where I do have to state that ATF offices around the country have different attitudes. The ATF office, say, in Wyoming, is going to have a very different view and very different outlook than Chicago, who's going to be different than, say, Florida, who will be radically different than D.C. So now I was caught between Chicago ATF, who wanted me to bring this to their office in person and surrender it, and Phoenix ATF, who wanted to know why in the blankety-blank they were being bothered with this blankety-blank. Again, their words. It finally got settled out. I had to bring the item in to ATF in Phoenix. They took a picture of it, all different sides. Those pictures, and again, this is early 2000s, were printed, mailed, old-fashioned snail mail, up to the ATF in Chicago, and that's the last I heard of this issue. But I do want to show your audience this is my first machine gun. Well, it's a heck of a place to start. Hopefully didn't pay too much for it. I think I was in 20 to $30 with shipping. I mean, you don't see machine gun prices like that anymore. Like in fairness, that's a really good deal, Mike. The, la the last time I've heard of any machine gun below probably $50 
Actually, I can go even lower, below $20 was when the government itself was selling the Vickers balloon guns in 11 millimeter, and that we're going back to post-World War I. That just doesn't exist anymore. Doesn't exist anymore. Nope. But this is my first machine gun. Well, thanks for coming in and sharing this story. I know I got a hearty laugh when I heard it. And let us know down the lens if you got a laugh out of this too. If you've got some interesting ATF stories or law enforcement stories maybe, be sure to drop us a line. Also be sure to check out the comment field below where there's always an interesting discussion. Hit that like button. It's the best way to show your support not only for this channel and of course the Second Amendment, but also to let Mike know, hey, maybe I should keep coming back and we can keep kind of baiting him back here. See, I keep promising to buy him lunch and then it's like it never happens so it's sort of a thing um, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this if you just caught us browsing through don't forget that subscribe button now we're going to close out with our quote of the day in honor of mike and his fondness for destructive devices we're going to veer a little bit outside our normal field of kind of stoic in those sorts of quotes to quote one former british prime minister winston churchill who said although personally i am quite content with existing explosives I feel we must not stand in the path of improvement. Well, here's here to progress. We'll see you in the comment section. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.